Welcome to this video on the engineering of flying suit donned by Sam Wilson, also known as the Falcon, in the Marvel comic universe. Coming up, we will take a deep dive in the mechanics of this versatile flying suit. We will touch on some aerodynamics that is easy to understand. We will also try to evaluate if the suit can be made with the technology available to us today. On this channel, Synergy Files, we endeavor to inspire engineers and technicians to never miss a video, subscribe to our channel and stay posted. Falcon or Sam Wilson is a popular character in the Marvel comic universe. His Exo-7 wing harness has intrigued a lot of technical minds. It gives him an extremely high maneuverability which makes him a formidable opponent. His suit incorporates both flapping wing mechanism and a jetpack. So the first thing to establish here is why a flapping wingsuit is advantageous. The short answer for this is the versatility of flight that can be achieved with such a machine. The way birds fly is something we haven't been able to replicate in any of our conventional flying machines. To elaborate further, in a fixed wing aircraft, flight characteristics like hovering cannot be attained. On the other hand, a wing that has the ability to flap when needed can provide both hovering as well as soaring capability. Flapping wind design aircraft are called ornithopters and a well-designed ornithopter can not only take off vertically but also can fly backwards. Question may arise at this point about jetpacks and backpack helicopters. They also allow hovering and give versatility in flight dynamics so why not just use them instead? To answer this, let's focus on the jetpacks first. We do understand that by turning the direction of the nozzle in a jet, unique flight characteristics can be achieved. In fact, in modern fighter jets, thrust vectoring is a capability that is very desirable. Thrust vectoring allows the jet to point in one direction while moving in another. However, the reason that the jetpacks are not as widely used even for military applications is that they consume a lot of fuel. It should be noted that flight times for these jetpacks last at most a few minutes if not seconds. For the Iron Man suit that also depends upon jet thrust for flight, the unbelievably high energy requirement is shown to be met by a fictional arc reactor. That technology unfortunately does not exist in real life and we are still decades away from a hazard-free cold fusion reactor that is small enough and light enough to be mounted on an exoskeleton suit. In other words, we can forget seeing an Iron Man suit in flight, at least in the near future. As for backpack helicopters, their mechanism is inherently unstable as well as fuel consuming. A jetpack that does not have any wings relies on thrust force alone to keep the object in the air. On the other hand, a jetpack attached to wings is aided by the lift force when moving horizontally. In aerodynamics, there is a term called thrust to weight ratio. It is simply the ratio between the thrust produced by a jet and weight of the aircraft. If we look at the list of aircrafts and compare their thrust to weight ratios, we find that those with very high ratios have the capability of vertical flight, such as the space shuttle. In other words, only with thrust to weight ratios of greater than one can vertical flight be achieved. On the other hand, in passenger aircrafts, we notice thrust to weight ratios of only 0.22 to 0.35. The reason being fuel economy that takes a precedence and lift force rather than thrust force is utilized for attaining flight, which is generated by flow over airfoils. So we have ascertained that the utilization of wings greatly reduces the fuel consumption for the jetpack and gives it longer flight times. Now let's home in on Falcon's flying suit. As mentioned earlier, the great thing about Falcon's suit is it is a combination of both the ornithopter mechanism and the jetpack. So the advantages are multiple, that is vertical flight, hovering, thrust vectoring, reverse and long duration flight capability. Throughout history, man has tried to achieve ornithopter style aircrafts, getting their inspiration from nature. Earliest attempts involved simply attaching large feathered wings to arms. When this didn't work, people started attaching feathers to long wooden levers to make longer wings. 
This idea was also deliberated by Leonardo da Vinci. In those days, material technology wasn't good enough to build lightweight stiff wings and also the understanding of flow and flight dynamics was limited. Today our grasp on the subject of aerodynamics has improved leaps and bounds to a point that we can now test new aircrafts on our computers through virtual wind tunnels using computational techniques. Furthermore, material technology has vastly diversified what we can create. In fact, using these new materials, human-powered ornithopters have been successfully designed and tested. Now, through physics, we know that for an ornithopter, the higher the frequency of wing beat, the higher the average thrust. The high frequency of wing beat can be achieved easily through an electric motor coupled with camshaft mechanism. More sophisticated wing movement can be achieved through a variation of Theo Janssen mechanism. If a separate motor is not used to avoid weight, then just like in helicopters, the jet blast from the jet pack can be used for providing flapping movement using mechanical links. It has been reported after numerous studies that a well-designed ornithopter can outperform a quadcopter. We find two different kinds of wings in nature, namely the membrane type wings as seen in insects and in bat. In birds, we find feathered wings. Most of the development in modern ornithopters has been with the membrane wings and also those wings are depicted in the later version of falcon suit. The wing for the ornithopter has to be made up of material that is stiff while being lightweight. Membrane wings can be easily made with the lightweight materials available today that are strong enough in that they don't tear in the most adverse of conditions. So for example, the carbon fiber sheets that were used in Solar Impulse 2 aircraft wings weighed only 24 grams per square meter, whereas an ordinary printer paper weighs around 80 grams. In other words, with today's technology, stiff retractable wings can be made with material that is lighter than paper. To make the Falcon suit in real life, a good starting point would be to modify Eve Rossi's jetpack. However, one problem with this design is that the fixed wings in his suit also act as a storage for fuel. The second option can be the modification or upgrade of Richard Browning's pack. If lightweight retractable wings are attached to this pack, the flight time can be notably increased. Furthermore, the pack will become safer due to redundancy provided by soaring of wings. Rossi's jetpack had four jets, each capable of producing 50 pounds of thrust, and in Browning's suit, six microturbine jets produced a total of 286 pounds of thrust force equivalent to 130 kg force. Straight away, we can notice that Rossi's suit, which has wings, requires 31% less thrust for flight. Both these packs rely on fuel, and as the fuel is spent, the suit gets lighter, this means that the thrust has to be regulated throughout the duration of flight. According to Browning, once you get used to the suit, your mind and body get augmented to controlling and stabilizing of flight by subtle movement of arms. This control can come to someone as naturally as learning to ride a bike. Furthermore, Browning has said that the Daedalus Mark I could reach up to speeds of 200 miles per hour and can fly for 10 consecutive minutes at a few thousand feet. There are many ornithopter toys available in the market. Most of the designs are very inefficient. There is one exception though, Festo, a German organization that specializes in kinematics, amazed audiences when they showcased the Smartbird, a mechanical robot that was both shaped like a seagull and flew exactly like a bird. This robotic animal was adopted by the US military for espionage. With new age materials, the flapping wing mechanism as used in the birds can be scaled up. It should be noted that for any initial iteration of falcon-like suit to be successful, the focus should be on the use of wings for increasing the flight time by providing lift force rather than using the wings for vertical thrust. In order to lift the person off the ground, jet thrust can be used. So here's the verdict. Well, we can safely say that the time has come when we have enough technology to realize a falcon suit. Initial application of such technology would be in the military or in extreme sports. It would require will, ingenuity, and a bit of courage to see the suit through. 
Who knows, one day bird-like flight suits can become the main mode of transportation. And with this, the video is concluded. If you like this video, please press the like button, share it to spread the word. There are many such videos on the channel based on engineering of comic characters. Make sure you check them out too. Thank you for your attention.